Before the inception of the multiverse, before reality became muddied by things like time, space, shape, life, death, the gaping, formless void simply was. A realm where thoughts of impossible beings held no difference from a physical object like you or I. In that endless nothing, the multiverse dared rear its head and bring disparity in existence through that very existence itself. Reality, as we call it, is an affront to those that came before. Well, it is impossible to understand how something could be when being was not yet a mere concept. There are those who still remember such a time, such a place, and they have not forgotten. Hello and welcome to Monster of the Week, the show where we dig up old creatures from past editions of D&D and our other favorite tabletop role-playing games and bring them to light and convert them for use in your 5th edition D&D campaign. Today's creature is an extreme oddity and comes to us from Pathfinder. If you want to look for it yourself, you'll be able to find it in the Bestiary 5. Wreathed in unfathomable secrecy, the Hoondoon is a very peculiar life form, if that's what you even want to call them. They're certainly not undead, because for something to be undead, it has to have at one point been alive, and they're certainly not constructs, because they weren't created by anything, as far as we know. But they're definitely not alive, so where they come from and what they are, well, just stick with me for another minute here. These creatures are the literal embodiment of entropy. They form a chaotic brotherhood of ancient monks that came from the world before any type of existence. The void, as it's often referred to in D&D and other fantasy literature. Not only do they come from a world of nothing, but they're also one of the very few creatures that can not only live but thrive on the negative energy plane. My first instinct was to call these creatures eldritch abominations, but I'm hesitant to use that word because they don't fall in line with the ideas and philosophies of many of the old gods like Cthulhu and that kind of stuff that we hear about so much in the popular zeitgeist of fantasy and horror. But they don't really fit in anywhere else, and that's kind of the whole point of these creatures. So today I'm going to teach you about what they can do in battle, a couple of small changes I've made to them to make them a little more in line with 5th edition, and of course we'll learn all about them and talk about some plot hooks and some story ideas for how you can actually use these creatures in your game. So try not to look at that strange thing it's holding because it's time for... So let's start out by talking about just physically what a Hundun is. According to the laws of reality, they literally should not exist, and the state of reality is constantly trying to correct them. The space that a Hundun occupies is extremely unstable, and their movements can seem kind of jerky because of it. Mechanically what this means is all attack rolls against one of these creatures has disadvantage, kind of like a displacer beast, but to a much more powerful level. Not only does that help keep the Hundun alive, but it also provides a really interesting bit of flavor when you explain kind of why to any of your characters who might be able to make a high enough history or arcana check. Now, when it comes to communication, they will primarily use telepathy amongst their own kind, but they can speak audibly to other creatures as well. Now, if a creature does try to make mental contact with a Hundun using a telepathy spell or ability of its own, it is possible, but they're going to have to pass a DC 20 wisdom check. And if they fail, not only does the spell fail to connect mentally with the Hoondoon, but they're also going to take 8d10 psychic damage. This is just because the mind of these creatures is so alien and near incomprehensible that when you try to make mental contact one, it is very difficult unless you are a master of your craft. It just helps sell the idea that the Hoondoon is something to be feared and something that is very alien to what anyone would have come in contact with before. Another one of their traits is literally just called faceless, and I thought this was kind of because they had these dark robes that covered up any of their faces or any part of their bodies really, all you can see is their hands. And I assumed incorrectly that underneath that hood they must have some kind of horrific visage or something going on there. But as it turns out, the true answer is much more terrifying because those robes it's wearing are not robes. That is the creature. What you're looking at is literally its skin. This was a pretty disgusting and terrible but also cool realization to have and that means it should be even more so that way for your players. 
It has no eyes or ears, making it effectively blind and deaf, but they do have blind sight out to 300 feet because of their acute senses and ability to detect gravitic, infinitesimally small distortions in the area around them. I think that's pretty cool, and it's unlike a lot of creatures that you might be used to seeing. I think the weirdness and that kind of alien element is what makes the Hundun so fascinating. And of course, a creature that's been around this long will be able to cast some spells. Most of its spells just kind of revolve around random destruction. You've got things like inflict wounds or even misty step if it needs to kind of get from one place to another very quickly. But it also has things like disintegrate and power word kill. And earlier when I said these guys were monks, I didn't mean just in the mystic traditional kind of mysterious robed figure way. They also have a killer melee attack. In fact, their primary means of offense is getting up close to their opponent and hitting them four times with unarmed strikes. Their strikes not only deal a fair amount of bludgeoning damage, but also cause necrotic damage. And much like the way of the open palm character class, they have the option of knocking people prone, pushing them away, and doing some kind of interesting maneuvers when they make contact with their unarmed strikes. And these creatures are large as well, so when they get up close and personal, their fists or kicks or whatever you deem that they're doing are going to hurt. Now the other major feature that the Hundun has access to is its staff, called a Strange Attractor. This staff is actually an extension of the Hundun's body, and when you look at it and see that it's kind of looked to be made of skin and organs and stuff, that will make sense. One thing that's interesting about the staff is it looks different to each individual person that sees it. It's always something revolting, so to one person it might appear as a strand of organs and bones and that kind of stuff, but to someone who's not as grossed out by that kind of thing, it might appear as something else that that character is terrified of, or at the very least would find unpleasant. And the way this actually works is, as an action, the Hundun can activate its strange attractor and move it around up to 60 feet. Now, it can only move it as a move action, so on its turn, instead of moving itself, it can move its strange attractor. The strange attractor can move into other creature's squares, and if it moves into the same space as another creature, that creature has to make a saving throw or fall unconscious for one round. It also acts as a gravity well, so all creatures within 30 feet of it have their movement speed cut in half, and they have to make a second type of save, either dexterity or strength at the creature's choosing, and if they fail that save, then they just can't move at all. So with a combination of tactics employed with the Strange Attractor, its devastating melee strikes, and the few powerful spells it has, the Hundun is set up not only to be very weird, but also to be very powerful and potentially devastating to a party that's not prepared to fight one. So giving your players the information they might need, if they go looking for it, so they can face off against the Hundun is very important. Now all that said, 5e being the sleek and elegant system it is, I figured we should make a couple minor changes in the form of a few. So the first and really only major thing I did here was give this creature legendary actions. It's CR 22, it should have legendary actions. And as any of you who are experienced DMs will know, the action economy is everything. So a creature of this CR without legendary actions is actually a little weaker than it seems. So basically it can do two things. It can cause all creatures within 30 feet of its strange attractor to take some psychic damage. And it can use its other legendary action to cast one of its at will spells. This is all just to help the Hundun keep up with the action economy. And after I gave this creature legendary actions and really started to look at what it can do, it kind of appears as the antithesis to a solar, which was an unintentional but pretty neat thing, where solars try to sow law and order throughout the multiverse and obey gods and have this whole hierarchical structure. Hundun's are literally solo operatives that just kind of go about their business and try to sow chaos and discord throughout the multiverse and hopefully lead to its ultimate demise. And that brings us to the next point of our video. Let's talk about some. First and foremost, the Hundun can be an absolutely amazing, overarching, big bad villain for your campaign. Even if the end goal of your campaign isn't necessarily to take them down, they can be a great driving force kind of working behind the curtain as it were, manipulating mortals, elementals, demons, angels, even gods to twist the flow of the multiverse down a path of ultimate destruction. So if you are looking for a monster to be a grand master that works from the shadows on a cosmic scale, the Hundun could be it. Another interesting thing that some of the lore about this creature tells us is where they come from. I mean, we don't know where the original Hundun's come from, but when a new Hundun is required, 
how it is created. See, these creatures are extremely in tune with the existential chaos of the multiverse and reality itself, so they have inklings about when things might happen in the future, or what might be the best course of action to further their goals. When a new Hundun is required for who knows what, possibly to fight against the forces of good or law or anything in the future, two other Hunduns that already exist will kind of just instinctively know this and come together. And what they do is they form their strange attractors, so each one sacrifices their staff essentially, into kind of like an egg-like fleshy thing, and then go their separate ways without saying a single word to each other, and then that egg forms and hatches into a new Hundun. Then the fact that these guys come from eggs is just disgusting because of course they would come from an egg. I don't know why not. Now this behavior is extremely outside of how Hundu normally behaves. They are most often solo operatives as I've mentioned. So for them to come together like this might be a huge red flag to anyone who happens to be watching. And that could be something that kicks off an adventure for the party where they're sent to investigate this or to possibly destroy this new Hundun before it can be created because who knows what chaotic purpose it might serve down the line. The other thing about these creatures is they are one of the very few beings that can exist on the negative energy plane with no ill effects. So if your players happen to be going to the negative energy plane for some reason, or if they're just having an adventure that spans some of the outer planes, they might encounter a Hundun, and it could be a very interesting NPC, not even necessarily a boss or a villain, but just a creature they meet on their travels. And if you want to use the Hundun not just as a curiosity or some kind of random RP encounter, but actually as a quest giver, it doesn't necessarily have to be evil. A Hundun could send a group of adventurers on a quest that might seem not so bad or even good or righteous under the right circumstances. I mean, the Hundun themselves kind of seem sinister just in how they look and behave, but they might have a good argument for why the players should go and do this thing for them. Of course, the Hundun is doing this to try to subvert the very essence of reality itself, but an elder being like this has a perspective that is impossible for anyone to understand, so going and doing some kind of mission for it that might not seem that bad could have ill effects a hundred or even thousands of years down the line that the players would have no chance of having any insight to. Maybe they're tasked with going and destroying some type of devil who is commanding a small unit of lesser devils and it's meant to return someone's soul or something like that. This to a group of righteous adventurers might seem like a good thing to do. They're slaying evil characters, they're bringing back someone who's good, or maybe even achieving some kind of goal or taking an artifact away from these evil creatures. But maybe some 8,000 years down the line, that devil was going to become a pit fiend to be a pivotal asset against a standing army from the abyss invading and then getting into the upper plains. But since he was defeated before he could ever rise to his true destiny, that doesn't happen and that army from the abyss does in fact get into some of the other planes. Or perhaps the players are tasked by a Hundun to find an ancient ruin somewhere and the players say, oh that sounds great, there's lots of treasure inside, they can keep whatever they want and the Hundun presents it in such a way that it seems as least sketchy as possible. But maybe once they actually get to the ruin and clear it out, take all the treasure, become kings in their own right essentially because of all the treasure they've found, there's some kind of artifact in there that seems totally innocuous and completely unnoticeable to anyone who wasn't looking for it, but then the Hundun, with the knowledge of where the ruin is, can now go in and claim that, and it might use it for some nefarious end. I mean, there are tons of ways you could skew what seems like a normal quest to have ramifications down the line that those player characters won't even notice, but on the grand scheme of things will affect your world. And if you're someone who likes to run a consistent D&D &D world that many campaigns happen in the same space, it could be really interesting. Maybe the players even conduct a quest for this Hundun, and then the next campaign you play with those same players involves the ramifications of what their ancient past selves did. Overall, the Hundun can be a great big bad villain, a tenuous friend, an overarching villain, or even a driving force in your own cosmology, depending on how you use them. And I think that's what makes them really interesting. 
they're definitely something worth paying attention to. Now, if you've ever happened to have played in a game where a dungeon master has deployed a Hundun against your party, or maybe you were the dungeon master and you've used this in a past Pathfinder or other type of tabletop game, definitely tell us about it in the comments. I would be super interested to hear how you guys have used this creature, or even if you have future plans on how you might like to use this creature. As always, if you do decide that something you want to do, the stat block is in the description below. You will find everything you need there in a nice, neat little Google document. And of course, if you are one of my patrons or you're interested in something a little fancier, uh, on the Patreon page, you can find the Monster Manual kind of style stat block that I photoshopped and put together for you guys. Also, other thing, I am playing in a D&D &D stream called Heroes of Yarviskir. I am playing as a ranger, uh, monster hunter, and that game is every Sunday night on my good friend Ollie Rant's channel. He's a fantastic DM, does lots of cool world building. And we last session just had a cripplingly sad encounter with a Banshee. So if you're interested in checking that out and supporting myself and that endeavor, uh, I'll leave a link to that there as well. You can catch that Sunday at midnight BST. And if you do have any recommendations for monsters you'd like to see covered, maybe you have a favorite monster from AD&D that doesn't get any love, leave a comment about that or tweet at me or you can find us on Discord and message me there. Um, you will find a way to get a hold of me, I am sure, but just let me know and I will add it to the list and check it out. Uh, in any case, thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it and I'll see you in the next video. Until then.